What's up guys, it's Phil with PMK Woodworking and I'm going to show you guys how to hydro dip absolutely anything. Now hydro dipping is a really cool process. Um, this is where you take an object, you dip it through the paint into water, but the paint sticks to your object and doesn't stick to the water. Now, obviously hydro because it's water and everything's wet and all that jazz, so you do need to use things that aren't gonna get destroyed by the water. Uh, but one of the cool things is you can literally hydro dip almost anything. Um, it's a really quick and easy process. I've scoured YouTube, I've tried a bunch of different stuff out, and this process is the best that I've seen. I'm gonna try two different techniques today and show you guys the difference between the two, and you guys choose which one you think is best, but this is what works for me, um, and I hope it works for you guys as well. So check it out. For starters, you need a large container, which as you can see I've got here, a big tote container. It could probably be bigger, but this actually works for me because most of the objects I dip are not that big. You're also going to want to pick out your colors. Now, um, you can basically pick any colors you want. Um, you know, so we're going to do this kind of cool. Something else to keep in mind is the type of paint that you're using. You want it to be an enamel paint. Um, and then also, so definitely not latex, definitely not water-based. Uh, and then I have used both Rust-Oleum and Valspar. I prefer Rust-Oleum and I tend to find it in more places. Uh, but this Valspar stuff is actually pretty good too. So really depending on which big box home store you have close to you um, is the one you're going to want to go to to get your colors. So Rust-Oleum also has a really crazy range of colors and that's one of the reasons I like them for this kind of project. So we're also going to just grab some random colors here and go for it. Last couple of things you're going to need is I use some old spray paint caps as cups for my paint. I'll show you what to do with those in a little bit. We definitely want some gloves because you don't want to get that stuff all over your hands. Some tape to tape off anything that you don't want to get in the paint. And then the object that you're going to be dipping. Today I'm going to be dipping this bottle that I made last Christmas. Um, I'm going to try something cool with it, so we'll show you that in just a minute. Alright, so now it's time to check out how quick and easy this project can be. So step number one, once you've got everything set up, is to go ahead and get your water and fill the tub all the way to the top. Now just being perfectly honest here guys, in my opinion, what I have found is that cold water actually works better. Especially right now, it's hot and humid, so this thing holds about 10 gallons, so I'm gonna go get some more. All right, that's pretty full, so I'm gonna let that settle down just a little bit. Get this dirt out of here. And uh, as that settles, I'm gonna get my paint ready. So one process I've seen done here on YouTube a lot is to spray the paint directly on the surface of the water. Um, I don't really like that because I feel like it makes it too thin and that that's going to dry a little too quickly, especially if you're trying to mix colors. So uh, for the first bottle, for the glass bottle, I'm going to go ahead and try that process and just see how it works. I've never done this before except for trying to do it with clear coat one time and, and that just was not good. So I'm going to repeat what I did last time and see if I can not mess it up this time um, and just see if it works and then we'll try the other process after that. So now we sprayed it directly on the surface. Time to dip it in. Let's see what happens. Go back in. Now once you get your bottle or your object completely submerged, you want to swish away all the paint from the surface and bring it straight back up. Look at that. That's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> now you don't have to dump your water every time. You can actually reuse it. Once this stuff is dried, you can see it kind of makes like a film on the surface of the water. So you can actually take a paper towel and starting at one side, you want to just kind of collect that film as you go and just push it forward. Look at that. It all comes together and comes right off. Flip it around to the other side like these last little bits. You don't want to move around too much because you don't want this stuff really getting everywhere. But as long as it's out of the way, 
then you're good to go. So I think that actually went pretty good with the bottle, uh, doing that, doing the paint that way. I, like I said, I've done that before and it failed miserably, so now I'm going to show you the way I normally do it. So for this, you want to make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. You're going to take one of your caps, you're going to take one of your colors, make sure this bad boy is all mixed up, and then spray it, not full on as hard as you can, but just kind of lightly spray it so it's not spraying back out at you into the cap or the cup or whatever it is you're going to be using. Now, you don't need a whole lot of this, you just want to have enough that you've got some pretty good color. Let's go do the rest of our colors. Now I've got my colors ready to go. I'm going to float them on top of the water and I've got my object ready to go as well. Check this out. So this is a small bottle that I made. Uh, this is actually made from cedar. It's a wood bottle um, and this is for a game called Polish Horseshoes, which is a lot of fun. So to personalize it, I've actually made this little cedar bottle, painted it white to prime it. Um, and then while it's still just a little bit wet, I'm gonna go ahead and do the hydro dip. That way the paint will stick to it really well. Now the process for this is pretty cool and pretty easy. Okay, all we have to do is take our paint and simply hold the paint right above the water and just drip it in like this. Let it spread around a bit. I like to mix colors within colors just a bit and see what happens. Orange in there, orange, yellow, purple, all kinds of goodness. All right, now, as you can see, my yellow's kind of dissipated out to the sides a little bit. So something else you can do, which is kind of cool if you want to do a marbled effect, which I do want to do on this one, take a dipstick and just really lightly pull back through the paint without making a whole lot of turbulence. You want to do just enough to kind of pull these colors through. We're not trying to mix them. We're just trying to get them to make these cool shapes. I'm going to break up my yellow dots just a little bit. Okay, and for this particular project, I do want it to stay a little bit thinner because it's a smaller thing, so I want a lot of detail. So I'm just going to mix this up a lot, just like that. Again, not making a whole lot of turbulence because you don't want to really do too much to the paint, but you do want to have it all spread out. So I got some nice clear spots there where the white's going to show through, and I think that's going to be awesome. So now it's time to dip. Take our bottle, hold it at an angle. I'm gonna go right here where there's a clear spot. And go in at an angle, moving kind of slowly. Make sure the paint's sticking to it the way you want it to. Go down, go down, go down, and just like that. Let's get all the surface cleared off here. There we go. Nice clear spot to pull it up through. Boom, look at that bottle. That is cool. <laughs> So I'm gonna dip another couple objects and then show you how to clear coat these things so you can get them all finished up. I want both of these to be real shiny, so I am gonna use some Rust Oleum lacquer. This is a real high gloss finish, and there's a special key to putting this stuff on. Now, this paint is still tacky because it takes a long time for it to dry, but you never wanna put fresh lacquer over fresh paint, especially if it doesn't have a good base like on glass like this. This is primed, this is not. So what I'm gonna do, is do a real light, just kind of dusting coat. And I'm gonna do that about six times to that bottle to make sure that that stuff doesn't start peeling up. Now on the smaller bottle, I'm gonna do the dusting once, and then my second coat's gonna be a little bit thicker. And I'm just gonna keep building it up that way. I do want the lacquer to be pretty thick on this bottle as well because it's going to be getting hit by a lot of frisbees. And I know the paint's not going to hold up permanently, but I want it to hold up a little bit. So give it a nice dusting like that, let that dry for about five minutes, and then put on the second and third coats. All right, so there we are. This is a really cool looking glass wine bottle and my Polish horseshoes bottle. It's turned out really cool. I think I'm actually going to make another set of these out of cedar or out of pine or poplar and 
do the paint like this and actually hit it with a frisbee and see how it holds up. But those turned out pretty cool. Here's a couple other projects uh, that I didn't show you. This is a recipe book holder. Um, I used a couple different colors that made it real marble looking, which turned out really nice. I did the gun stock on my pellet rifle. And this actually turned out pretty cool. I really like the way this looks. Um, it's not as even as I would have liked it to be, but I can always sand the top off and put a little more clear coat if I need to. Tumblers are always fun. If you've seen uh, one of my recent updates, I was drinking out of my other bigger tumbler, um, and it did, I did that marbled look to it, which is pretty awesome. Lots of cool stuff you can do with this process. So I have been having some fun with this stuff. Um, one of the other projects that I really enjoy doing was my longboard trucks. These turned out pretty cool. Um, I really like them. I like the color scheme. It actually matches my tumbler, which is fun. And I couldn't help myself, and I went ahead and did another set of trucks. So this set is pretty cool. It's a set of gull wing sidewinders with the double kingpin. I painted the bottom of the board, and I decided to use the same colors that I painted this little space painting uh, to do the trucks. I think those turned out pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about them. Um, I am a hydro dipping fiend. I've just been painting everything, which is kind of ridiculous, but also kind of fun. So if you like doing these kind of projects and you like the way they look, um, I would love to see you guys try it. Make a video, tag me in it, and let me see it. Uh, this is a really fun process. I learned how to do all of this by watching other people's videos on YouTube. So please use my process, improve on it, find something else that works better, test some things out and see if they don't work as good, I don't know. Tag me in your videos or comment below if you've done this before. I definitely want to see your work in your videos. So get in your shop, give this a try, and we'll see you guys next time.